Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that we introduce Ms. Priyanka Sharma, a distinguished development professional and a Women Lift Health Fellow 2023. With more than 16 years of experience, Ms. Sharma has woven a tapestry of experience across various domains from adolescent health to water sanitation and hygiene and maternal child health nutrition. A journey starting from grassroots level to renowned international organizations like KPMG, World Bank and UN agencies reflects her exceptional leadership qualities, particularly noteworthy as an Indian female breaking barriers in the development sphere. Her expertise encompasses team and program management, program design and implementation, strategic engagement with policy makers, scale up of evidence informed program models, leadership, networking and capacity development. Armed with a master's in social work from Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai and a BE in electronics and communications, she has left an indelible mark in senior management roles with esteemed organizations like uh, Hindustan Latex Family Planning Pro Promotion Trust, Mary Stops India and IPE Global. In her current role as lead for Anil Agarwal Foundation's Program Management Unit at KPMG India, Ms. Sharma is spearheading socially relevant business pipelines in Rajasthan. Leading the 25K Nandgarh model, she is making substantial strides in transforming Anganwadis across the state with a commitment to co-creating model Anganwadis with government for quality service delivery to the last mile. In the past, as a strategic lead on the Uran project, she orchestrated interventions to reduce teenage pregnancies through integrated adolescent sexual reproductive health education in schools. She also provided technical support to achieve open defecation free status across the state through community led sanitation approaches. Her catalytic role in leveraging funds for menstrual hygiene management and her contributions to the Swachh Bharat mission reflect her commitment to ensure impactful change. A true people's person and team player, Ms. Sharma fosters mutually progressive partnerships, emphasizing high work ethics and integrity. Her adaptability to diverse work cultures, coupled with a keen eye for maximizing available resources, underscores her leadership style. As she joins the Learning from Leaders series, her insights promise to be a source of inspiration and practical wisdom for professionals across diverse sectors. So get ready to explore the leadership philosophies and strategies that have shaped Ms. Priyanka Sharma's meaningful career. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. That sounds like some introduction to me. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Vina. So, ma'am, coming uh, straight to the point, my first question to you would be, uh, could you walk us through your early engagement in the social sphere, including the hands-on experience at grassroots level, and then elaborate upon the journey that led you to affiliations with reputed organizations like KPMG, World Bank, or the UNICEF, so that we are able to give our viewers an idea how you started and where you have reached. Uh, so thank you for having me over today. It's uh, a really humbling uh, uh, opportunity for me. Thank you. And uh, uh, to start with, uh, I was a regular uh, uh, science uh, PCM student who went ahead to do her engineering. But during my engineering, I realized that was not really me. I was not going anywhere with uh, uh, an engineer. I could not see myself as an engineer. So I realized that I was very good with people skills. Okay. And uh, there was there was a social perspective that I always wanted to do. So in the college also there was an opportunity where uh, there was uh, this haemophilia, uh, 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 a person who was suffering from haemophilia and uh, there were some donations that were supposed to be uh, collected. Mm. So that was my first realization of uh, the inclination towards, uh, you know, affecting some sort of social uh, um, help. 
okay. towards the suffering so i went ahead and collected so that is where i realized i need to shift gears and i appeared for my uh, uh, social work exams at tiss mumbai okay. and i got through so that was like uh, a total game changer okay. and then those two years uh, led me to believe uh, and very strongly established what i really wanted to do in life Great. and uh, i stepped into the development sector um, i was given good opportunities i got good mentors and supervisors and whatever i am today i think i've learned from the best in the industry mm-hmm. uh uh my first ceo who was my boss i've learned so much of uh, uh work ethics integrity i for detail and what it means to lead okay from front how you take your team together and never put your team down and be accessible and approachable to them mm-hmm. they should be able to reach out to you at any given point of time so i think that is where i learned my lesson slowly and gradually you want to name him so uh, that it's uh, uh, mr manoj gopala krishna who was uh, recently uh, heading uh, care uh, okay. india organization Wonderful. he was the ceo at that time for hlf ppt okay. uh, and so i learned a lot from him then uh, definitely my career progressed i joined uh, mary stops uh, if you talk about milestones uh, uh the big, biggest milestone was uh, i uh, got an opportunity to be the state lead for mary stops india operations okay. in rajasthan at a mere age of 29 oh and that, that was happened, too young that was too young and i can still i mean i can honestly tell you it was an overwhelming experience i did not know what to do i felt every team member was older more experienced i was just 3 years into the uh, sector okay. and work but what made me reach that position was because i uh, uh took up the management of a crisis situation because mary stops india uh, uh provides family planning services mm-hmm. at government uh, uh run family planning camps mm-hmm. uh, in rural areas so there was a client death that happened after operation oh. a tubal ligation oh. and there was a lot of furor by the uh, uh, family members they uh, there it was obviously a huge crisis okay. and uh, i somehow felt that uh, i need to rise up to the situation mm-hmm. manage it mm-hmm. and i think possibly because i rose up to that situation the management thought that uh, she should be the one who should lead oh so that was a game changer so Definitely. first lesson and from this milestone is that never shy away from rising up to situations Absolutely. because you never know what lies ahead and uh, how much you're able to manage it also comes from the situation itself so that was a role that really catapulted me my uh, at a very personal level i could realize my own potential very fast yeah. which could have taken another 5 6 years time but i had to grow up really fast <laughs> within within like bunch time and manage a huge team of 180 people across the state okay. so that was one major milestone and then second i would call a major milestone as uh, uh, being the state sanitation consultant for the world bank okay. again rising up to the situation i was uh, a young mother of two uh, i had taken a sabbatical okay. of uh, one year after my daughter was born who's my second born mm-hmm. and uh, i was looking out for opportunities i had no clue about sanitation sector water and sanitation is not something that i had dived into i was a health professional public health professional right. but this came to me uh, somehow and i thought why not this will only teach me something new sure so uh, i took it up wow so uh, when i took it up it it kind of changed uh, you know the whole landscape and the trajectory of my work i got associated with the world bank which is a huge name in of itself course, course. Uh, i learned about a new uh, domain uh i learned the power of social behavior change communication and community led uh, campaigns okay. because uh, you can't teach people sanitation and hygiene unless they believe in it absolutely so yeah. uh, that was another major milestone where i would say that take up whatever comes your way mm-hmm. uh don't uh, think you are not made for it or you won't be able to handle it if you think you can you will be able to do it so i learned on the go i learned on the job it was lovely working with grassroots communities and to see people change behaviors and adopt behaviors and uh, swachh bharat mission 
was all about constructing toilets in the mind right. so before you make it on the ground you have to make them on the in in your mind and help communities build that in their mind so that they use it sure. so that was my work with unicef and world bank and then adolescent health curriculum was another major milestone where i was able to negotiate uh with the government that this needs to be a part of the school Uh, curriculum okay, so and teachers need how to did teach you convince the government about it by making them the own own by giving them the ownership okay. so uh, this was done in uh, dholpur district of rajasthan mm-hmm. uh, thankfully to my luck mm-hmm. we had mr rakesh jaiswal who was then collector of dholpur okay and once i was able to talk to him and convince him that you know uh, when you catch children young and you teach them the right things at the right age they are able to take decisions uh, about their own reproductive health mm-hmm. and their rights right. in the future because once you leave the once they leave school you won't be able to catch them mm-hmm. school is the place where you can actually tell them prepare them and build their agency to take life decisions mm-hmm. so those are the life skills that you need to give right. and um, uh, thankfully he understood he owned that whole thing up and uh, across the whole pool around 2000 schools government schools mm-hmm. government teachers taught adolescent sexual reproductive health curriculum my god it schools. must have been a very daunting task because yes. in a backward i mean dholpur is not very yes. advanced in such a place uh, to convince about a taboo topic like sex yes. or sex education i mean it must have been yes. a mammoth thing yes. thing for you but that came as a help because he was there to lead it from front right. so he he warded off everything that i came uh, or could come as a challenge because he owned it up he believed in it wonderful so uh, yeah so i think these were the milestones that really shaped my uh, confidence as a leader and uh, work uh, as a development professional so what we can understand from uh, her milestones here from her journey is that rise to the occasion if an opportunity knocks even though you are very uh, young you must have the confidence that yes i can do it and it gives you results now priyanka it's a very common thing that they say uh, every leader has a vision and uh, i'm sure you also had a clear vision right from the outset especially after you got into the development sphere so um, what uh, vision did you have and uh, did this vision evolve over a period of time and uh, secondly uh, related to the same uh, thing uh, did the vision guide your decisions your actions and the different roles that you got into uh, with time and when i say roles i'm not just talking about the professional ones i'm talking about uh, the roles that you ventured into in your personal life as a daughter as a wife as a mother so tell us about it yeah so uh, about the vision i think uh, i am a go getter as a leader so uh, i really don't set out a vision to start off with it evolves as my journey goes further okay. but one thing is very very clear to me that i forayed into a profession which i was not earlier getting into so that change has to be justified within right. so for me uh, the end user or the beneficiaries mm-hmm. that i am working for or that i feel for have to form the core of the efforts okay. so anything i do anything i plan anything i uh, strategize or anything i put my efforts to has to ultimately lead to uh, the benefit of the end user or the beneficiary be it a mother mm-hmm. be it a child be it the adolescent girls and boys mm-hmm. uh, anything and everything they have to form the core of any effort okay so uh, that's 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 the basic drive of my vision forever and it's not going to change ever uh, as a mother uh, i would say uh, i got into uh, taking consultancy roles because i was a young mother of two young children yeah. so uh, my children were born two and a half hour years apart so uh, i could not take on full time jobs mm-hmm. so my consultancy uh, roles with the world bank and the unicef were something that gave me flexibility of time very nice so that was a conscious decision that i took as a, a woman and a mother of young children okay and once i thought that they were grown up enough mm-hmm. that uh, they were going to school they were spending half the day at school is when i 
for it back into full time job with ipe global and now with kpmg great so great. those have been uh, my uh, decisions and vision as a woman at home and as a woman at workspace so what we fathom now is that uh, vision we do not need to you know frame right in the beginning before we start off uh, with our journey it can evolve with time and priyanka has been a go getter and secondly we also understand that uh, she is very clear that the end users the beneficiaries uh, justify the vision uh, whether in the professional sphere or even as a mother so she has uh, practiced flexibility so that she can do justice to all the roles that uh, she has been uh, taking up so uh, with this priyanka we come to another question that uh, in your role within the development sector how do you foster convergences particularly with government entities uh, could you share the insights into your negotiation strategies which are aimed at engaging the government as active partners in the success of programs uh, since you have the focus that you should be creating a very sustainable road map yeah so um since i've been working across 16 years very closely with government departments be it the health department or the swachh bharat mission directorate mm -hmm. or uh, the uh, icds department or the women and child development right. department education department so so to say i've been always on projects that have very closely worked with the government and rightly so that any development projects that we tend to implement they have a life cycle Yeah. so a project would always have a life cycle of maybe 2 years 3 years 5 years but they cannot they be there forever because right. they are donor funded and donor environments keep changing with uh, you know realigned uh, mm -hmm. uh, priorities globally or um, nationally true so uh, at the end of the day overall uh, ensuring that the state becomes a welfare state mm -hmm. is the uh, prerogative of the government mm -hmm. and uh, as development sector professional i very strongly believe that we are here to create an ecosystem which leads to sustainable development of the end user and we work as catalysts to ensure that government we are in support of the government to bring out those kind of uh, uh, schemes those kind of policies and uh, those kind of uh, welfare activities that ultimately uh, benefit the whole uh, ecosystem in that sense so uh, as a catalyst i would like to call myself uh, as a catalyst mm -hmm. uh, over the years what i've learned very very strongly is that if you want a sustainable road map for any development project mm -hmm. the government and the concerned department has to be a part of the planning process from day one okay. you cannot plan do uh, all the homework start implementing and then take it to the government to say that now you take it up mm -hmm. it's not going to happen so you have to create co ownership uh and partnerships from day one and it has to be a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. wherein it should be a win win situation for them it should be a win win situation for you and it should be a win win situation for the donor as well very important so uh, uh one very very important lesson for me uh, over these years has been that build partnerships from day one you can't uh, take it in the middle of the whole Thing. very Sense. important very important so a very major uh, take away from uh, this uh, insight of priyanka's is that we uh, have to build a sustainable road map and for that we need to involve the government as a co-owner so that there is a symbiotic relationship uh, right from <coughs> the beginning it just cannot happen uh, suddenly or in the middle or towards the end it doesn't work now uh, priyanka we of course keep on reading about leadership and there's this notion i came up across that uh, effective leadership involves a grasp of three p's people process and performance now if you have to prioritize amongst these three then what would be your emphasis on as a leader uh, are you more inclined towards being a results driven or process driven or a people driven leader um i would say that uh, end result drives me from day 1 okay. and since i've already already told you that uh, for me result is uh, the end users benefit so i think that result result cannot be compromised for mm -hmm. anything okay. but i am a very strong believer of uh, driving those results along with people okay. i am a complete team player 
uh, I feel I'm as strong as my team mm -hmm. and I'm as weak as my team. So mm -hmm. my team makes me, my team breaks me. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the results are very clear and the moment I take on something, I know where I have to reach. But I always build people along with me. I always take people along with me. Mm -hmm. That is what at least I would want to believe. <laughs> uh, and uh, no, I'm sure uh, your team <laughs> members would agree. <laughs> so, uh, and I like to uh, build leaders also. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very important. And uh, this is also something that I've uh, learned and it has got re-established in my fellowship, Women Lift mm -hmm. Health Fellowship, where um, it is a very strong takeaway for me that unless you create more leaders, you will not get catapulted into uh, stronger, higher, better roles. Absolutely. So unless you leave that space mm -hmm. and bring somebody up into that space, there's not going to be another space created for you ever. Right. So uh, I think bringing people up so that you go further up is something that uh, I would uh, like to strongly. No, you are so uh, right here Priyanka because you know most of the people they feel insecure that if we lift others you know we are going to be uh, replaced uh, but uh, this is matured thinking as a leader like you mentioned that if you empower them uh, they would be in your position and you would go higher. Higher. You so, can't fall down <laughs> because nobody can take away any position from you. Yeah, that's beautiful thought which all leaders need to understand so that they can you know help others rise yeah. and one more thing i would like to share here mm -hmm. that this uh, fellowship has been extremely empowering to me mm -hmm. because this fellowship is all about uh, uh, strong women leaders across the country okay. there are 30 women who mm -hmm. have come together as cohort members okay. and there's so much that we are learning from each other okay. from the whole program and uh, uh, i feel that uh, when women start supporting women, right. there's, there's no other support that you need in life. Yeah, because uh, we know our challenges, mm -hmm. we know our uh, uh, struggles, we know the kind of multitasking that we mm -hmm. end up doing Absolutely. as a common tribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, since we are able to empathize with each other mm -hmm. much, much more than anybody else can, I think we are also able to offer uh, curated support to each other. Uh -huh. So uh, if you know what a woman, uh, what it takes for a woman to work, right. you would definitely be able to offer me much better support than anybody else. So I think that's also something that has empowered me as a leader and uh, uh, made me aware of my potential and my uh, challenges, which I am already working on as part of that program. Right. So. Yeah. So uh, that is very beautiful thought that when women support women, you know, there is nothing uh, more that you could ask for. So we thank you so much, Priyanka, for taking your time out and sharing your leadership journey and the success mantras uh, in our Learning from Leaders series. Uh, I'm sure it's going to inspire all those who want to make a mark, not just in the sphere of social work, human rights, or the developmental field, but across industries, across uh, sectors. So in the end, what I feel like saying for you is that you are truly a leader who knows the way who goes the way and who also shows the way to others. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Veena. That was really a humbling experience. To summarize the learning from leaders in our interaction with Ms. Priyanka Sharma, the first important thing that she told us is rise to the occasion and grasp every challenge, treat it like an opportunity. Secondly, she said, have a go-getter attitude and um, uh, what's important is that the vision need not be fixed but flexible. It can evolve. The end result should be beneficiaries need to be justified. Thirdly, she talks about uh, being a catalyst to create an entire ecosystem if you want your project to succeed. Another aspect she touched upon is, is to have a sustainable roadmap. You must involve the government or the other parties as co-owners so that you are able to have a symbiotic relationship. She also talked about uh, being driven by the end results from day one. Of course, the performance justifies the people and the processes.
Ms. Priyanka also told us about uh, taking the team along with you, empowering them because the team can either make you or break you. And lastly, she said, we need to be aware of our potential as leaders. So then we are going to be more confident and more capable and achieve more in life. Thank you.